Welcome to Scorched Earth and a general reading for the sign of Aquarius, Sun, Moon or Ascendant for the month of February 2023. Happy birthday. It's no doubt your birthday is falling soon. I'm using the uh, Night Sun Tarot for you today. A little bit of housekeeping before we begin. Uh, first link in the description box is to the extended that you can access at the end if this reading resonates with you and you'd like to go a little bit deeper. The second link is to the six month overview that I did for each of the signs that runs from January to June 2023, obviously. Um, that's the second link. And the third is to my private community, the Order of the Phoenix over on Circle. Um, so if you want to check that out, you know where it is. Let's have a look and see what's going on with you, Aquarius. Three cards for Aquarius. <clears throat> so we have the Magician and the Three of Wands in your recent past. That's a very strong combination right there. Uh, current energy for Aquarius is the Five of Cups. And what about what's coming towards Aquarius, please? We have Judgment. So... At the bottom of the deck, we have the Ten of Wands. You can see very clearly how this would relate to these two cards here. But these ones are somewhat of a mystery. So let's get some clarifiers out and see what's going on with that. We'll give these a good shuffle. <coughs> Tell me why the Magician is... Actually, let's flip this around so you can see what I'm looking at. As ever, it's straight... Honestly, I swear to God, the camera's become the new... Shut the fucking window. It's happened. I found a new thing to complain about. <clears throat> Tell me about the Magician and the Three of Wands. Oh, there's the first one. I've got the Six of Swords in reverse. That's interesting. And the Lover's card. Another card of Manifestation. You have all three that I associate with Manifestation now. And one more, please. Thank you. And that is uh, the Nine of Pentacles. Tell me about the Five of Cups, please. Six of Cups, well, makes perfect sense. This here is. I knew that was coming out. I could feel it. That's the tower, obviously. So we've got, got a trifecta of Scorpio energy right in the middle there. But don't panic, we'll get to it. And then what about Judgment, please? Thank you. We have the Two of Pentacles. And we have the King of Pentacles with, at the bottom of the deck, the Hanged Man. So, Pisces energy there, but one that very, deals very uh, very much with the act of changing one's position on something. And, you know, we're definitely seeing a changing of position going on here. Hopefully that's nice and straight so that you can see it. I have to just avoid my anxiety about the fact that it's not straight on my table. But there we are. <clears throat> so... Oh. The first thing that occurs to me here, Aquarius, is that, that you have a decision to make, but it's not the decision that you thought you had to make. It's something entirely different. It's one that has far more long-ranging consequences than the one that you thought you had to make. And we'll get to what, what that's talking about <clears throat> soon. But what I don't want you to do at this point is to be concerned about the idea that everything might be falling away because it absolutely isn't, right? Well, we'll get to that in a second. So let's start off in your recent past. And when I talk about recent past, I mean, that literally could be this morning or it could be, I don't know, six, seven, eight weeks back from here. We had you in a state where you were feeling very, very motivated, very, very capable and, uh, and quite intent on doing something. Right? Whatever the magician appears, because it is a card of manifestation, it's it's a focus of our, our will and our intent. And we're using all of the tools that we have available to us in order to take those steps out into the world that we need to, in order to bring whatever desired result that we're after towards us. Right. The interesting thing here is for me with the six of swords, in so much as it seems to that you have gone back to something. It's not about starting something new. This is about going back to something that you have already started. Now, that could be an idea. It could be a job. It could have been, you know, an intent to move back to an area that you once lived in. You'll have to take it as it resonates to you. It could be a project, something like that. And maybe it's just something that you've done in the past <clears throat> to, um, to entertain yourself or to earn money, that sort of thing, right? 
And we've got the Lovers card and the Nine of Pentacles. It seems to me that actually the, what you've got here is a return to something um, <clears throat> that feels comfortable for you, which is an interesting position to be in. So like, no, I remember when things were good and I was doing this and I want to go back to doing that thing. Now, that in and of itself is not a terrible thing to want, particularly if it's something that you are particularly skilled in, that you've allowed to slide at somewhere, you know, at some point in the past. And these things happen with life. You know, you might be doing something as a hobby and be really quite good at it, quite competent. <coughs> but then children come along or you have to work more or, you know, the world loses its fucking mind for three years, something like that. Right. So we've got this sense of coming back to something um, and something that that made you feel I, I'm going to go with comfort. I feel comfort from this here. You know, we can talk about it in terms of, of independence and self-sufficiency maybe something that gives you money to pay your bills and all that kind of thing but you know she's dressed in very nice robes and she's in a vineyard which always gives the um always gives us the idea that whatever it is the state of comfort that she's reached has taken a while to to get going I don't know if you knew, but I think I'm sure grapevines don't produce grapes for the first four years that they're in the ground or something like that. Um, so there's been time and effort being put into something. And perhaps what it is that you've returned to, because you've put so much work into it in the past, it's been very easy for you to pick up. It's not like you've had to start from scratch with something. And we've got these card, all these five cards here giving this, this very strong, very determined sense of where you are going with a thing, what it is that you're going to do, how you are going to spend your time moving forwards. <clears throat> and that all feels really good. But then we move into this energy here and this feels considerably less good. You know, the tower I don't take to be a particularly negative card, actually. I think it's a wonderful card. But the problem is is that it often shakes us away from something it's a redirection it shakes us away from something that we thought would last forever the tower you know we put all of this effort into the tower and now the tower comes and and everything falls down you know if we're getting hit by this lightning bolt there's fire in the tower and everybody's falling you know to what feels to be their their absolute demise <coughs> But because it's a redirection, it's saying, no, not that way. You need to go this way instead. And I think that it's interesting that we started off, I started off with that very strong feeling that the decision that you have to make coming up is not the one that you anticipated doing. So maybe you thought it was something that related very strongly to this and whether or not you should throw yourself back into it. <clears throat> instead, what we've got is the Five of Cups crowning this set of cards here this is the predominant energy and these are the reasons why you know these are the the additional informations that are coming in so it's very difficult to look at this card and go well the tower is always good when it's preceded with this energy here now i still maintain the tower is always good but this is the card that we need to focus on here like i said you've got this trifecta of scorpio energy going on right now oh hello this is, so this is a really interesting thing. Um, as no doubt some of you will be aware, Pluto is moving from Capricorn into your sign of Aquarius, um, I think at the end of March, something like that. When I was doing the meditation before I started your reading, what I heard was, how are you enjoying your free, <laughs> your free trial to, uh, to Pluto? <clears throat> and I went, what? I can really tie it in with anything at that point. This makes lots of sense. <clears throat> Scorpio, Pluto, Scorpio, Scorpio. Um, I'm not sure which one of these, if, if any of these cards are exactly Pluto in nature, but because we've got that Scorpionic thing going on and we're actually getting it here too with a judgment card. Right? Scorpio rules that too. What we've got is something coming... <sighs> coming to the surface that you didn't anticipate having to deal with. Uh, the fact that you've put all of your eggs into this basket, it seems to be all of your energy is going in this direction, and then we end up here. It's almost like Pluto saying, well, it's quite good, it's quite good, but it's not quite right. We've got to have you going off in a different direction now. 
I've said to a lot of people over the last couple of weeks that it does feel like those people who are sensitive, who feel the rumblings of Pluto, and I really, it's, it's rumbling and it's bassy and it's really, really deep. But it's the same with Saturn as well, moving into Pisces, which happens, I think, within a week of that happening. It's a big outer planetary shift. Um, the people who can hear the rumblings are utilising this energy that we have of all planets being direct, and it's happening for the next three months, and changing things. Now, I don't remember what came up in your six-month overview specifically, but I do recall that the only sign that did not get the tower showing up repeatedly through it was Sagittarius. Now, for whatever reason, they've been taken and put to one side. Like, they don't have to worry about that for this period, but everybody else does. And what I saw at that time also, right across the board for all signs, was this phenomenally accelerated growth. It's the best way that I can describe what I saw. Like everybody was was on a uh, on the steepest learning curve that they've probably experienced in a long time. And it seems that you are not exempt from that energy either, because we've got something that's falling down here in your current energy. Now, it could be related to this or it could well be that this needs to be put to one side while you deal with this, because it seems like the past is really raising up <clears throat> well it is actually we've got indications of the past all over this right so we've got a going back to something right that you have experienced in the past we have the card that deals with the past in and of itself and the judgment card also talks about you know in a slightly less linear way than this it also talks about the past we've got the the specter of the past coming back at you Aquarius asking you to deal with that before you move on before you move forwards now it could be that you're being altogether steered away from this towards something else but like I said the decisions that you need to make are not the ones that you thought you had to make and this is where the tower energy comes in it's not a tower if you see it coming it's not a tower if you expect it <clears throat> The energy of the tower is sudden and uh, transformative and incredibly destructive to cause you to, to start again. Right? Um, now, what I'm not saying here is that you know, you're about to lose your house or your fucking job or anything like that. I mean, for me, the tower has always been accompanied by um, some sort of insight that stops me from being able to see the world in the same way. I mean, often, actually, and this is quite interesting, it's been accompanied by a need to submit to an energy that knows better than I. Interestingly, I've just picked up this deck and we've got the King of Swords at the bottom of it there, the Aquarius energy. Um, whatever you thought you were going to have to make decisions about, it's now something else, it's something different, and it's something that is, is much more important. The universe is saying this is much more important than what you were doing before. Now, the Five of Cups is known as Lord of Disappointment, interestingly. <clears throat> and it talks about an energy of fixating on what we have lost rather than what still remains, right? And we can cover, you know, the associated feelings that we have with that are disappointment, resentment, bitterness. Yeah, this, this incredible sense of, of loss that can be all-encompassing. Um, it can speak to bereavement, too. And if that's happening to you, I'm very, very sorry about that. And you have my love during this difficult time. But the fact that the Six of Cups is here makes me feel that it is not something that has just arrived at you now. It is more the understanding of something that has happened in the past. I mean, this is what, um, this is what makes the Tower energy about it. Maybe it's something that you thought you'd dealt with and then suddenly you've just got this new insight and you're like, holy fuck, I need to completely write my internal narrative of who I am, what I'm about. Maybe where it is that I put my energy. Tell me about this. Oh, my cups. Oops, please. King of Swords. There you are, Aquarius, again. And the Ten of Swords. There's absolutely no doubt here that something has come to an end whether it be right now or in the past. Like I said, I'm inclined to think that it's the past, but we have the fool 
at the bottom of the deck right we've got the hanged man at the bottom of this one we've got the fool on the bottom of this one and we've got the ten of wands at the bottom of this one so we've got endings here we have the processing of endings and we have the new beginnings because the tower doesn't come to punish you the tower comes to make you go in a different direction right and part of that likely is dealing with the emotional ramifications of either something from the past or something that you're dealing in right now i mean the the ten of swords is it's an incredibly difficult card the whole suit a sword suit in and of itself is incredibly challenging and as someone with their south node in aquarius like it, it took me probably the best part of 40 years to work out that there was there was such a thing as too many swords. Took a long time, but I got there. Too much thinking, too much detachment, too much cutting, too much intellectual activity, and not enough of the other. And I wonder what is rising here in you. I wonder if that is the other now, the emotional stuff, the past stuff, the things that you don't listen, well, that, that you don't pay attention to anymore, right? But you've shoved it down into a corner. It's funny, when I talk about... um signs who are really really private right obviously scorpio comes to the surface every single time we talk about scorpio yeah let's just put those to the side for a second because there are a few other signs who do not broadcast their inner feelings as much as is normal shall we say i'm certainly not quite as bad as scorpio but but i feel like aquarius and capricorn and probably to a lesser degree a certain subset of leos don't tend to let out what is going on inside and particularly with Capricorn and, and and Aquarius and it's interesting that we've got that Plutonian shift going on between those two signs there they're both incredibly private but in different ways right Capricorn doesn't want to be bothered with talking about those internal private things because they're very very sensitive and they need to keep all of that battened down so that they can go and achieve their goals, right? Smash through whatever goals that they've set for themselves. Right? It's that kind of blinkered approach that they take to goal setting and goal achieving that allows them to be able to do that. It makes them very single-minded about it. With you, Aquarius, there's always that sense of wanting to turn away from what everybody else is doing. It's like, no, I'm not interested in that. I'm going to go do something else. <clears throat> And there's a corresponding lack of a willingness to allow people in to see what's going on with you either. It's just like, no, thank you. My boundaries are here. You can all fuck off. I'm going over that way anyway, so you can stand there if you want, but I'm not going to be here. We've got an, a lot of emotionally charged energy coming up to the top, up, up to the surface for you. And I think it is quite possible that it relates to your distant past. It could even be past life stuff. But there's some sort of challenging of, I would say, of your identity that is going on here. You know, the, this Ten of Swords, humiliation, betrayal, um, things coming to an end, you know, the ways in which we actually skewer ourselves to the floor with our own minds. We get kind of tied up in knots with stuff. The fact that the King of Swords is there, I feel like it really does speak to your decision-making processes and who you are as a person. Now, the tower that's coming down in a similar sort of fashion to how I saw with, with Capricorn this month is about the compartmentalization starting to break down. The ways that you can go, well, emotional shit goes over there and I'm not really that interested in that, thank you. And all of the other stuff that I'm interested in is here and then whatever my goal is is going to be over there. But they're all in nice, neat little boxes. And as I explain to people with... <sighs> Pluto in Capricorn is about the rules, it's the structure. It's the way that we all internalize the rule book and we know exactly what we need to do. We need to work hard and we have goals and we need to create, I don't know, it's probably not a particularly Capricornian thing, right? But we need to create vision boards and we need to really visualize ourselves where we want to go. And then we have to cut out all extraneous noise so that we can focus on that. But because Aquarius is everything that Capricorn is not, what we have is a breaking down of structure breaking down of rules you know rule book what fucking rule book what game are we playing here Aquarius isn't playing it 
Pluto is going to affect everyone. And at this point, I think the jury's out as to whether Aquarius is going to find this easier or more difficult than other people to be able to, to navigate. I would hope it would be easier. But there are things that need to be broken down first in antis anticipation of this energy arising. So whatever is going on with you at the moment, if you can detach <clears throat> from the situation enough to be able to perceive the bigger lesson that is going on here, which is that Despite the fact that you are a king of swords, there has to be an aspect of you where the emotional stuff gets a look in. Because otherwise you're just a robot, right? The emotional stuff is coming up to the surface and saying, what is it that you feel like you have lost, Aquarius? What is it that is holding you to the past? Because as the tower energy is coming in and, and knocking that all down, it's not in the spirit of betrayal, it's not in the spirit of humiliation, it's not in the spirit of, of the universe kicking the shit out of you, more it is in the spirit of allowing yourself to be reborn. Because we arrive in February with the Judgment card. Now, like all the cards, Judgment is multivalent, it means lots of different things. And I feel like every single meaning of the Judgment card here for you is actually applying at the same time so we have the resurrection of something right that that day of judgment something's coming up that, that we haven't seen in a very long time and it needs dealing with but we also have the notion of your own judgment the ability that you have to be able to make decisions about things and that's certainly in question here right the way that you are well it talks about changing your life too right it, it's it's a very, very strong card of making a decision. So is the lover's card, to be fair. But lover's is, is the act of stepping up and making any decision. It's having the confidence to do that. This is something very, very specific. Now, if you remember, as I mentioned before, the decision that you thought you had to make is not the one. Once all of this is going down here, there are a very different set of, uh, set of decisions that need to be made. And there is an adjustment period in that too. I, I think that you can expect, for the most part, most of February to be a little bit chaotic as you are beginning to, to try and find a way to find your feet with it here, right? We've got this, well, it's that the Two of Pentacles is pretty staged, you know? Pamela Coleman Smith was a, was a set designer for the theatre and there are several tarot cards where they look like they're taking place on stage and if you've got that performative aspect you know where are you performatively coping as opposed to actually coping with mean, this feels to me that like february is going to be a month where you need to be able to discern between the two and if there is a performative aspect to it the question is why aquarius because you are not a sign that is given to to need to perform at all for, for you know the benefit of everyone else. Everyone else is rarely something that comes into your emotional periphery and yet we have this emotional roller coaster going on in the background here. Right? We've got a period of adjustment and we've got the King of Pentacles. It seems to me that the, the goal has needs to change. What you were set on here is absolutely not what you're dealing with over here because you know, frankly, the universe is saying this stuff's more important. Now, it could be that this is an accelerated route to all of those things, because maybe the issue is that you've gone back and you're comfortable. And the universe and Pluto say, no, you have to be a bit uncomfortable here. You have to deal with the things that you're swerving before you get to here and you start making decisions of the like that, that we actually want you to be making. We, the royal we, whoever that is, right? <clears throat> we, they, whatever. King of Pentacles is Taurus energy, but it's, uh, you know, it's slow moving. It's fixed. It's, I imagine, slightly tortuous, actually, for an Aquarius. Oh, yeah. Aquarius, very, it's the fucking King of Pentacles that's just flipped out there again. You know, Aquarius is very swift. 
One thinks about the sword suit as being the fastest of all the suits. Pentacles, correspondingly, are, are the slowest. But what you've got here with the hanged man at the bottom of both of these decks and the death card is you needing to change your perspective on something entirely. We're pulling a full 180 to it on it and actually effectively submitting to the energy. Exactly what I was saying before, like my tower moments often require me to submit to stuff and I fight that. But look here, we have the death card underneath here too. More Scorpio energy. The Pluto is, is running riot through your energy at the moment. The Pluto. Pluto is running riot through your energy. Um, and it's demanding change and transformation. It's demanding that you submit to it. This Ten of Wands here is very interesting because it does suggest, although you're making pretty patterns out of the ten wands ultimately you are still dealing with ten wands and that is a you know that's more than you need it's considerably more than you need the energy here is getting you to change your life by i imagine actually giving your value system a little bit of a do-over you know we talked about um the, the the feeling side of you and whatever might be bringing these feelings of grief or loss up to the surface right and how that this is affecting both your your ability to make decisions but also your identity completely forgot where i was going with that but it's transformation. Oh, yeah, look at this five of wands. There's this conflicted energy underneath here. And it's like, well, I do it really well. But I'm still rocking ten wands. I've forgotten where I was going with that. But when we see the king of pentacles, the king of pentacles is about making a plan. King of pentacles is about showing up. It's interesting that we have those same grapes depicted on his robe, as we see here in the background of the nine of pentacles. It's sort of like you're being asked to step up and do something. You know, it could be that you've unexpectedly been put in a position where you need to look after someone financially, emotionally, physically. Ah, core values. There we go. What's more... <clears throat> A lot of Capricorn season was about revisiting our core values and working out what they stood for. You know, what do we stand for? What what are we interested in? What do we fashion our life around? So when you've got a situation whereby it's your both your identity and your decision making processes that seem to be affected by the energy that is going on at the moment, then then how could that not be? because of a shift in core values you know this feels very um forgive me kind of self-interested actually not in a bad way in a perfectly acceptable way but but very much focused on on the goal that you had for yourself whereas what we have moving through here after this period of adjustment is a situation whereby you are required to be responsible I always feel like when the King of Pentacles turns up, you know, he's looking after everyone. He's providing for everyone. And if something's occurred recently that has you going, holy shit, I need to focus on this, then it stands to reason that your goals are going to need restructuring. And the way that you get there possibly being slowed down considerably. We've got the Four of Wands and we've got the Ten of Cups there with the Death card at the bottom of the deck. So there's some sort of transformation within your collective, whether that is your family or your friends or whatever. But there's, a, um, there's potential here to create a new foundation. One where the, the Five of Cups will never have to come to the surface in the way that it has done at the moment because it's been processed and released. You know, grief is not supposed to be a state that we stay in. It is a process. And if we don't honour that process and let things go as it ultimately wants to, then it gets stuck. Treat this as, as the redirection that it is, Aquarius. 
And I think it's very important that you allow the universe to remodel exactly what you're experiencing because there seems to be a plan for you. And it all feels really quite dramatic at this point. But it will settle down, I'm sure. How interesting. Right, I'm going to go over to Vimeo now because I want to kind of dig into this month a little bit more for you. So if you'd like to join me over there, you're very, very welcome. If not, no shade. Just know that, that what you're dealing with now is simply that. It is a redirection. It is not a punishment. It is not, you know, your hopes, dreams, wishes, goals, all being kicked into the mud. They're being remodeled. They're being refashioned to take you in an entirely different direction. One that ultimately will be much more fulfilling for you and those that you are looking to be responsible for. Mm, okay, so I shall leave it there. Know that I love you all very, very much. And I'll see you soon.